Good afternoon, everyone. Just back from a coffee buying trip in Myanmar. While I was there in the last week of January, coldest temperatures they've had in a very long time. News headlines, Tachilek good for sale of coal burners during the cold wave. Needing to get blankets to the homeless in Yangon because it is so cold, they're not used to it. Second time in Laos, a severe cold wave coming this week. Farmers need to adapt to the new cold conditions. The harvest season in full swing up there, cherries red on the tree. I was searching for natural drive method with small scale landholders. Weather patterns are definitely shifting. Unseasonal storms throughout Myanmar rain, as well as extreme weather, the new norm. Rainfall down over 50% of what it has been normally. And this matches up with the 1756 era with extreme drought in the region. This does not bode well for China in the northeastern areas because this is where they grow a lot of wheat and it's going to experience a drought again. I always have so many people writing into the comment board asking me what I do and how did I ever get into this grand solar minimum and global cooling information. So I wanted to introduce what I do so you have a better idea of why I am putting out this information. I export green Arabica coffee beans in the central and southern Shan mountains in Shan state. The area itself located about 1,200 to 1,400 meters in altitude. They've had so many cold anomalies there over the last five years. And during this trip, talking to the old timers, they say it's the coldest in the last five years this year, but they cannot remember it being this cold except their parents telling them when it was so cold that the crop production was affected. So farmers are taking new unique steps, double netting over their nurseries, as well as putting out straw bales over the different plants. Coffee season is in full swing right now. The harvest, red cherries on the trees. I was looking for natural dried from small scale landholders, usually with a score above 83 to 85, putting that into the specialty coffee range. This is the cover of Silver Oak. This is a mix of macadamia nut and assorted fruit trees as shade cover over this coffee farm. See the density on there is really nice this year. I filmed this when I was out in the uh, coffee yeah. farm. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Natural method is different from washed. They actually take the cherries, put them out in the sun, let them dry naturally, and then crack the coffee bean out of the parchment after everything is around 10 to 12% moisture content. Did have a chance this time to visit nine different farms and processing facilities. This processing area here, they do washed. It's a bit larger operation. This is what I would consider a smaller landholder. This is the largest processing area in the entire Shan state. Back to the small scale landholders. This is what we were looking for, the honey processed method. After the beans are taken out of the parchment, they're sorted by hand to make sure that there are no defects, whether insect damage, mold, or whatever had happened during the, the drying process. This is what a small scale landholders warehouse looks like on their property. I'm also interested in the natural environment around the area. I like to photograph different flowers, insects, and things that we just don't have in North America. We have to go really remote, not frequently visited by foreign visitors except coffee buyers. Uh, they still use ox cart. This is a close up of an ox cart wheel. And how lucky am I to have this type of work where I get to visit these highland areas. The mountains you see there are about 5,200 feet at the peaks. We were down in the valley where they do the coffee farming. And this is the conditions we need to drive down to actually get to the coffee farms, crossing these wooden bridges along lakes, nice areas there. There's some sparse electricity in some of these villages and coming in and out. If you're not on the main road, you're definitely going down dirt and gravel. Some more images for you here of the drying operations and the different consolidators around. 
One thing to notice that they are widening the road up in these areas. The lines aren't even on the poles yet, but soon to come. A little bit close up here for you of the natural dry. And spectacularly, these are some of the treats. We're just driving along the road from Mandalay. And here we are, some ruins off the side of the road. And there's a couple people around a small little village behind it. And tucked away is this amazing Buddha. So those of you that wanted to know what I do, this is what I do. And this is why I see changes in our climate so much. And I see so much cold that is just not normal. Cold and drought, we're repeating cycles. And I'm just bringing you the information because it's going to affect and it already is affecting food production on a small scale across different continents currently. You know, down here in Yangon, it's supposed to be 25, 26 degrees. It's 11 degrees Celsius. People are huddled in blankets. They're just not used to the cold. This cold wave is unusual. And it's the fourth year in a row that I've also experienced and heard people talking about since I've been going down there. But each year has been successively cooler than the last. Tachilek, that's on the Myanmar-Thai border in the north, a bit north of Chiang Rai. Coal burners on sale. Look how much they're bundled up. Blankets for the homeless. A lot of good social work being done down there. Keeping people warm that just are not used to this type of cold. Second time now, a cold wave coming through Laos. It snowed there last week. Yet this is the second cold wave coming again. Not usual, not normal. The news is even telling people, please bundle up. It was so cold around January 24th, 25th that people couldn't even go outside. There's a mix up in the weather patterns there as well. They're getting torrential rains during the dry season. You know, almost six inches of rain and there should be no clouds right now. It should be dry season. Monsoon. This is monsoon summer rains that are occurring in the wintertime. It's an opposite. Even the Myanmar Times coming out, extreme weather, the new norm for the farmers. In addition to the flooding in the wrong season, there's a drought that's continuing. Half of their rainfall has disappeared from 60 inches down to 24 inches. You know, this is not exclusively in Myanmar. You got Laos, Thailand, Myanmar, all experiencing cold along with first snows in Vietnam, 300 kilometers south of Hanoi. And in 2009, Yangon had the coldest winter in 30 years. And now again, 2016, it's the coldest winter they can remember. Average daily high and lows for Yangon, usually around 18, but this time it's around 11, dipping down 11.8 if you need to be exact. Now to the coldest year on record was 1960 with 9 degrees Celsius. This comes from the Uni of Myanmar Ministry of Forestry. When I know there was such a severe drought going on, so I jumped over to the Monsoon Asia Drought Atlas. Everywhere you see on this map, they're doing a reconstruction of drought intensity over the last 1,000 years. Using tree ring data off of teak trees mainly, but they are using other species further north in uh, the non-tropical zones. Anywhere you see a red box had heavy effects during the Grand Solar Minimum and further back into the 1280s, 1300s, little ice age, strange parallels in drought. This is 1756 to 1768, 12 year period there. I want you to notice the United States as well. California, we keep hearing about the drought. This seems like a cycle that's repeating itself. Alaska as well, drought a bit warmer, but look down on the left, You'll also see that the intensity of drought in Western India, as well as all through Myanmar and Thailand, a bit closer here so you can see a year by year view over those 12 years. Let's focus straight in on Asia. The intensity of drought seems to be in these two areas here, but another PDF, reconstructing climate and environmental changes in the past thousand years, shows that the fall of the Ming Dynasty in the 1600s 1641 exactly center of the grand solar minimum notice northern china up there severe drought that's exactly where they grow their crops not only is china going to get smashed with cold 
but they are going to go into intense drought. So everywhere you see on this map here, north of 35 north is going to go offline. And China imports so much food to keep its citizens fed right now. When this major grain area goes offline, China is going to have a severe problem feeding its people. And I really believe that's why they're in North Africa. Because North Africa is going to become wetter. They should be able to grow some crops and then redistribute. The rest of the world is going to have trouble feeding itself as well. So China's not alone. Russia, Canada, United States, and Europe will also have decreased crop yields. There's going to be such a spike on food prices coming up around 2019. And again, from the same PDF, Reconstructing Climate Environmental Changes, the mid-17th century, which is the mid-1600s, was the coldest period of the last thousand years in China. If the new grand solar minimum kicks in as intense as it was then, they are going to repeat the exact same pattern and they will see the exact same crop losses. Nice look at the Asian monsoons, as well as temperature overlay reconstruction. You can see when there's drought and a dip in temperature, there's a fall in the dynasties. Tang dynasty collapse. Yuan dynasty collapse. Ming dynasty collapse. Present communist regime collapse. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. I did want to show you what I do and why I'm into this presentation of the information I give out. I want you to make your own decisions after I show you these videos. I don't want to tell you what to think. I want you to think for yourself. It's going to be a concerted effort of global population working together to get through this next crop loss era. And I really hope as a species we can get it together because there is so much division amongst us right now. We are one human race. We are one human species. The only way that billions of us are going to continue to survive is if we work together.